in this video, I wanna go deeper into some Industry 4.0 examples for you guys. Last week we did a video sharing some Industry 4.0 examples. You can watch that video here. In this video, we're gonna dive deeper into the auto manufacturer example. You guys aren't gonna to wanna to miss this, so stay tuned and we'll dive right in right after this. This is a little presentation I was kind of working on. You know, this this is this you guys have probably recognized from the why your IoT strategy will fail video. This I do want to share. This came up in Unified Namespace. So I right here I'm actually showing this is kind of I want to share this because what was really cool this week was a lot of people were sharing their own unified namespace architecture drawings. Like a half a dozen of you shared your own architecture drawing. And it was really cool because each time it got a little bit better and then someone would say, oh, like, well, how does ERP plug into that? Well, um, someone asked, you know, how does, how does an edge node, like, how would you architect it? You know, does the edge node have the entire enterprise unified namespace? Is it a, is it just the publisher of data or is it a, both a publisher and a consumer of data? So here I showed how over here on the inventory side, we, we have like an older PLC, maybe it's just an edge gateway, a PLC and an edge gateway that is just publishing into the unified namespace, it's tags. It's not, it's not subscribing to any data in the unified namespace. So I kind of show it here as gray. It's just publishing tag one, tag two. Here in the finishing line, I kind of broke it down. Uh, this has a, an array of PLCs and these PLCs kind of need to share data. Now it's not like high speed data that you would want to use like, I don't know, a CAN bus or some high, or, you know, Profi bus high speed network between these two, but it's, it's where you'd want to maybe share some data, you know, between these two PLCs, like what, what the part number is that you're working on or things of that nature. These PLCs can publish data into a, a little local unified namespace where I put it here in lowercase and they can be publishing and subscribing to each other's data. So here you'll see each of these PLCs will have the finishing line local UNS. It's and then uh, PLC one, PLC two and PLC three data. Then this UNS, which, you know, could be like, let's say on a, oh, let's go back here. This UNS then publishes into the cloud broker. So these PLCs are publishers and subscribers to data in this UNS, but then this UNS just publishes it to the enterprise UNS. And then over here on the left, we have an example of this paint line, which is publishing. It's, it's a smart PLC. And you'll see here, this PLC is a little bit bigger because it, it actually has the UNS on board. And this is really the future of where we see our, OE, our IOT devices and our PLCs and our HMIs, like things like the CMTS VR, they'll have a UNS on board or like a Raspberry Pi, you can have a UNS on, the, on, on that device. So it has its tags available in its namespace here in the paint line PLC. It's publishing its tags into this UNS and then it's publishing from the onboard UNS into the enterprise UNS, but then it's also subscribing to the other enterprise data, including the finishing line and the inventory line shown here in orange. So now why you want to do that is because you'll see here, and this is something like that Tesla would do is they would take that paint line, finishing line, inventory line, and they would just they would build the architecture up. They would, the tree would, you know, it's like a, a tree. So here we have Fremont factory. Here we have the Gigafactory one, Gigafactory N. They all have their own site level and UNS. And then that publishes into the enterprise UNS. So you can real easily see how an operator from the Fremont factory could see and get value out of edge data on the fifth gigafactory that Tesla builds. This, this is why this architecture matters. That's why we keep talking about the Tesla and stuff because they're the ones actually doing it and then Amazon. And then he, we'll take it one step further is over here you'll see not only, this is where Tesla takes it one step further. 
you, you, you know, a lot of companies may have industry 4.0 technologies, but they're not fully integrated through the production layer. And they're definitely not integrated out into the, into the real world, into where the customer gets their product on their hands. And, and we were talking a lot about this with Ira Sharp, shout out Ira, where OEMs are going to be publish putting their machines out into other manufacturers, and they're going to be benefiting from that data. They're going to be the, the manufacturers and OEMs of the future, like Tesla, will be producing data. They'll, they'll be producing equipment, and then that equipment will give continuous feedback to then they can produce better equipment. So you got this fully closed loop integration of your business. That's the manufacturing holy grail. You can't achieve that without a unified namespace architecture. So that's that's kind of what I sh wanted to share there. And that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to get subscribed and leave your comments below. Join the Industry 4.0 Community Discord server and we'll see you guys next week. Peace.